Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for your subscription, support, comments, emails, and everything. Helps drive me. <clears throat> Today we are going to go over a suggestion from Queen Cat um, on, this is an article and video from dogsbite.org. Um, this was, these, these um, assessments of shelter dogs were done in July 2020, roughish, uh, so relatively recent. I'm sure for some of you already know dogsbite.org, might have already seen this, um, but we're going to go through it. We're going to read a little bit into it. I will probably touch on a couple things, and I might even play a clip or two, though I'm a little hesitant to do that because I don't want to violate any kind of copyright and cause a video to get taken down, but I guess this is just a good Good as time any to see if that's going to happen, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. This is Shelter Dog Behavior Review with Sue Sternberg and Gia Savocci, okay? And they're reviewing worst case scenario dogs. <clears throat> and it's really sad because over and over again, they speak on the fact that these dogs would be adopted out. There was a euthanasia ban, which prevented them from being able to put the dogs down. And some of these dogs just sat in these kennels and cages for years. Um, one of them, I remember her saying two years before they were actually euthanized. So not only is that just plain stupid, uh, it's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. And uh, whether you like dogs or not, that's resources that could have gone to a critter that's actually worth it. Or, I don't know, maybe a human. Um, but hey, let's not talk about that. We're not ready to talk about that, as the kids say. <clears throat> uh, but this was extremely disturbing. She was right. So I highly suggest you guys go and watch this video. Um, it's pretty long, uh, but you know, if you zoom in a little bit and just pay attention to the, the, um, the video as you go through it, you'll get to the part where they're actually testing these dogs. And it's pretty wild to think like that these dogs were adopted out. Um, it says right here, now that I'm looking, this was created March 1st, 2021, so pretty recent, right? And a lot of the shelter reviews being from 2020. Um, <clears throat> interesting stuff. So I'm going to read you some of the article, and then let's see, I wanted to play one, one dog that they had pulled up, uh, so you guys could see it. It's about a Cane Corso, very large breed of dog. I was capable of, of inflicting great damage. So let's let's brush through the article a bit. Oyster Bay, New York, in a rare appearance on YouTube, we were able to bring you the expertise of animal behaviorist Sue Sternberg. And she's been crafting the Assess a Pet protocol test for shelter dogs since the 1990s. While professionals in the public can always access paid webinars of Sternberg, it's an atypical occasion to witness and learn from her in a two-hour YouTube video where she reviews the worst worst case shelter dog scenarios with behavior specialist Gia Savacci. Um, both great people, lots of great points. Um, you know, the one lady, she actually works with dogs and she's even reasonable enough to say, this dog needed to be euthanized, this dog needed to be euthanized. She even points out that there's one highly aggressive dog that just does nothing but spin and bark and snarl just all night and all day and that it upsets all the other dogs in the other kennels uh you know which yeah that's pretty wild um nobody wants that right like hold on a second i gotta get fluffy yeah <laughs> well i think i'm gonna need it for some of these explanations and <laughs> we all know i like to use my little my little things here um i'm still in the middle of the battle with the carpenter ants in case anybody wants to know Definitely going to have an exterminator come out soon. What is going on down here? I'm um, definitely going to have an exterminator come out soon and, and do something. I try to treat things the natural way. And, and now that we've entered the bleach era, we're out of the natural realm. So it's just time to call in the professionals uh, in case anybody wanted to know. I'm still alive. They didn't carry me off and kill me. I'm winning the battle so far. Back into this. Uh, Savachi is currently the contracting behavior specialist at the Oyster Bay Animal Shelter. On the day this video was posted, Savachi was in the news after she posted a TikTok video in response to harassment she receives from no-kill shelter advocates. 
who believe that no aggressive behavior, including killing dogs and people, is enough to warrant humane euthanasia. Pfft, what world do we live in? I'm just not used to this, and I always knew dogs were like screwed up and stuff, and I started making this channel, and I knew people were like doing that and going, no, 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 it doesn't matter how aggressive it is. I didn't know it was happening at such a rate. They even said they put down a dog. Uh, she might even talk about it here, so I apologize if we double over. Where they had to put down a highly aggressive dog, and there was a huge protest, and people showed up and had candlelight vigils and all this crazy stuff. And I'm like, once again, I'm always saying, I, I wish we could treat humans with this type of compassion and understanding. We have like this dragnet to catch bad people, and we just like, you know, lock them up for a long ass time. And the therapy and things we give them in prison and jail are are subpar, it's just nothing. And then you look at the way they treat these aggressive critters, these mutants, and it just leaves one to wonder, when did we fall so far off track? And we've discussed that in a video or two, so I won't go into that. <clears throat> this also involves animal cruelty because keeping these dangerous dogs caged for years on end is cruel. And I totally agree. And these two both, like I said, work with animals professionally. Uh, so they are dog lovers or whatever you want to call it but they both are rational and understand that not every dog deserves to be put back out into the public they had a dog that um was let back out into the public that was on prozac i'm sick of hearing this too uh first of all pharmaceutical drugs are freaking garbage and for the few people that actually need a few of these drugs to get by i'm not judging i'm just saying it's not my thing Oh, can't we, you know, use some of these medications, keep dumping on these dogs and give to humans once again? But I live in a pipe dream. I'm from another day. I'm a bit older than some of you. And I remember when a dog would bite someone or even act a certain way, they were immediately shot. Um, we didn't take them to the vet. We didn't, it wasn't unusual. There weren't laws in each state. And even if there were, human common sense and rationale kind of, was more important than keeping Fluffy alive. You know, and then, but, but everybody doesn't care if I get mauled in the face. And we've learned that over and over again. When I described a friend of mine that I had said, like, you know, children are killed by this thing, and these things, and she was like, I don't care about statistics or any of that. All I care about is my dog. My brains, y'all. That's why I started adding that as a tag. Ouch, my brain, y'all. <clears throat> hmm. <coughs> Savachi was a whistleblower in a two-part news investigation last year of the North Shore Animal League. The shelter had been hiding the dangerous histories of some dogs available for adoption. Savachi and her colleague, John Bishow Simovilis, also said they were directed by their superiors to hide biting history of dog and use euphemisms instead. There's also a pattern of bullying by upper management that encouraged employees not to disclose these behaviors. And we discussed this um, on another video where they just take the animal, if they're having problems in that area and people didn't use their euphemisms, and ship them to another state and just adopt Fluffy into another house to kill another child. Um, now, Savachi and Sternberg come together in a dynamite duo to share the evaluations of worst-case shelter dogs whose behaviors are so dangerous there's no place for them to safely reside. These dogs are not rehabilitatable, and even housing or transporting them is a huge risk. Years ago, our nonprofit began documenting the rise of dangerous dogs being warehoused in shelters and adopted to the public under the guise of no kill. Today, the situation is worse. So many people like to think like no kill means a great thing and they're all excited and stuff, but this is actually a very dark side to all of this. And for once again, these people who claim that they're animal lovers, you can't be an animal lover and support half of this shit. It's not correct. Let me tell you, you guys might think I'm so bad. I'm an animal lover. I always have been. Uh, but I have common sense. I can look at something and tell if it has a place in modern society or if it doesn't. Um, I had someone make a comment this morning, totally respect him, um, Lawrence, about working animals and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, uh, you know, as I've worked and trained working animals... Cattle dogs, search and rescue dogs. I've worked with several types of dogs in training. I just, to this day, with the amount of damage they do and the things that happen, I just, I can't be on board. For me, the risks do not, or the benefits do not outweigh the risks, personally. That doesn't mean that everyone has to think the way that I do. 
we all have our opinions. That's totally fine. Um, you have to take the bad with the good with people. And remember, especially in the cancel culture society we live in today, we're not going to agree on every single little thing. And that's totally okay. Doesn't change my opinion on you. If you allow it to change the way you feel about me, I can do nothing about that, nor would I even attempt to. And I'll honestly don't care. Uh, but love Lawrence. Love his opinions and comments. Great dude. <clears throat> Excuse me. Before watching this video, it's important to understand parts of the assess a pet protocol. The video provides the basics. Essentially, it is built around the dog's sociability. The lower the sociability, the greater risk of future aggression. <clears throat> For example, despite this dog appearing friendly, Sternberg states, there is no social gesture. The domestic dog qualities are not in him. Once you understand sociability, you are on your way to understanding Sternberg's four-part assessment test. It's also important you understand the Oyster Bay Animal Shelter, where Savachi began working in early 2020, was under a one-year moratorium ceasing all euthanasia from March 19th to June 2020. So I wasn't sure. Uh, due to outcries by no-kill animal advocates, the moratorium forced the shelter to keep some of these dogs, even behavioral emergency cases, as seen in the video, alive. The moratorium was lifted in 2020, but the battle rages on. Savachi inherited this mess. These ladies both... Uh, you know, like I said, it, it, very, very intelligent, lots of common sense. We don't completely agree on everything, but it doesn't mean that they don't have <clears throat> a lot of experience to share and very rational people. Um, the moratorium on euthanasia resulted in a large population of aggressive dogs being warehoused at the shelter. Then there's a high population of aggressive dogs. The aggression is a, con a, a contagion, okay? Um, meaning that it affects the entire shelter dog population. There's no place for these dogs to go when euthanasia, you, excuse me today, euthanasia is refused. Not only even sanctuaries can handle these dogs. You will learn about Ruby, a dog with no sociability and severe aggression, and put into a rescue filled with cats that wanted to adopt them. The role a shelter should play is to protect people and dogs by making wise euthanasia decisions, keeping reactive dogs alive, and that caging and isolating is frustrating for the sake of a higher save rate is inhumane. Protests, petitions, and outrage by no-kill animal advocates indicate they have a complete lack of knowledge of normal dog behavior and a complete lack of knowledge of the limitations of behavior modification and of dog training. A lot of these people kept writing in and protesting and saying, oh, well, if you can't take them out of the cage and work with them, we have someone that will. We can't keep putting the public at risk because you guys have emotions. Okay, that's not fair to everyone else. There are tons of other animals out there you could be out adopting and all this other crap. Sorry, um, you know, you don't have to keep focusing on these damn things that you claim that you could help. Well, you come and take giant, giant Cano Corsi, or bleh, I can't talk today. That big cane, cane court, bleh, I give up. You just go get mean ass fluffy and put it in your house. But you know what? They do all the freaking time. So that's it's so freaking. There's a 13 minute excerpt of this webinar. Um, a behavioral emergency case is featured along with Sternberg's analysis that the behavior is not normal. I'm going to probably play that one. I'm going to focus on the most severe one. It was uh, pretty interesting. And I'll talk you through it since I'm not going to play the video. I'm just going to let you hear the audio. Uh, Ruby, a female pit bull has predatory behavior, killed a cat at the shelter, and attacked a dog through a fence. A dog is under legal proceeding. A trust was created to seize her from the animal shelter and place her into a rescue. The dog has been in legal limbo for two years. The dog can open up gates. A rescue that wants the dog is an indoor facility <clears throat> uh, with about 2,000 square feet. Cats and dogs, primarily cats. About 110 to 150 animals in that space already. It Sternberg talks about the frustration a dog like this experiences because it would be trapped in a shelter with a bunch of cats and it's a cat attacker. Um, so they go through, if you go on to this, they will read through and tell you exactly what they're doing in each different case here. So I'm going to touch on a couple before I play the video for you. There was a female pit bull <clears throat> named Precious. It shows the injuries after Precious and Ruby had gotten into a fence fight. Precious had been in and out of shelters her whole life. Savachi asked if it's valid for animal advocates to say any dog will fight through a fence and that Savachi should not negatively score a dog for fence fighting. 
No, Sternberg says, this is what happens when people see fighting stock guarding breed fighting stock guarding breeds and mixing in the shelter who have such a dog aggression and such arousal and frustration problems that this becomes normal. This is not normal. This is not what dogs should be doing. A normal dog will fence fight and there's no contact. It's all just display. Sounds, posturing, noises, and, uh, you know, so Precious in the kennel with um, repeatedly pacing around. This is cruelty. This is cruelty to animals. We have crossed the line. I call this a behavioral emergency. The dog has no quality of life. It is a response to abnormal environments. There is not a person who would go to a zoo, watch a gorilla doing this, or a wolf pacing, lunging, and circling, and say that it's okay. It's not okay. And by the way, um, caged animals do that. Um, bear do it quite often. It's very sad to see. Um, there's, there's a lot of that. You see elephants swaying and going into depression. Whales that bash their brains into the walls to kill themselves. Dolphins. Uh, this happens all the time. So, you know. There was a protest after Precious was euthanized. Okay, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. So, like I said, you guys should watch the videos. Protesters had said that she's a good dog. She just needs to go to a house without other animals. How many of these houses do these people think exist? After watching the dog-to-dog -dog test, Sternberg goes into the concept of game and being game-bred. Precious was not playing with the stuffed dog that they were using as their um, their indicator. Precious, like, yeah, I watched it, came in and immediately goes for the neck, flips this very lifelike large stuffed animal over, and starts going for the throat and holding it and dominating it immediately. There was no, like, stop and check it out, um, no regards to what the humans were saying, nothing, just right in there. Um... And like I said, how do you know that they're not playing with the stuffed dog? And as she said, play is reciprocal. Reciprocal. My, my language today. Sorry, my MS must be showing. But she is showing her motor, motor patterns. All of her behaviors are to kill. She's not doing it out of anger. These dogs do not belong in our communities. When shelters place these dogs or send them to rescue and they get loose and hurt somebody else's dog or a person, the emotional and financial ability, it's so irresponsible, it's got to stop. This is all in the name of a complete lack of knowledge of normal dog behavior and a complete lack of knowledge of the limitations of behavior modification and dog training. Okay, so let's go to... Okay, th this one was interesting. Dexter, a male pit bull mix, whom had been at the shelter for two years and adopted into two different homes. Three years old, neutered, and a repetitive kennel spinner and kennel reactive. They put the dog on Prozac. The dog fails sociability tests. High tail, giant shoulder swipes, giant anal swipes. What is fucking buttholes? He likes, he likes me clearly, Savachi said. Well, he likes you as his property. Very, very good point. So far, he has shown you no respect or sociability. Uh, I really like the way Sternberg um, deals with things. She's um, totally a, a no shit, no games playing lady. Uh, Savachi's great too, don't get me wrong. And like I said, this is... Two people that train animals are helping them put them out into the world, but as for people working with dogs and actually keeping it real and talking about the truth, I can give them some props, okay? So, during the stranger test, the shelter director was even afraid of the dog. Your shelter director is uncomfortable with the dog. Like, end of test, Sternberg says. For good reason. This is a dog with hesitant communication and shows aggression. The world is filled with hesitant communication. This is like saying that, you know, it's the child's fault when the dog attacks them because they're acting a certain way. I'm tired of all of that. We shouldn't have to be tiptoeing around and acting a certain way to appease these damn dogs or to appease a bunch of animal advocates that want dangerous animals out in the world hurting people and then pointing the finger at me, calling me an asshole and a hag and a dog hater and all this crap there was a person in my comments this morning that said you can kill me but don't hurt dog and of course their grammar was terrible it always is and i said oh honey you should have more self-respect for yourself than that that doesn't even make sense and i'm not out hurting people what kind of weirdo are you it's just weird you know what i'm saying the who says and does stuff like that as your life lacks substance I, I don't know, man. That just is too much for me. I'm not used to this. I'm used to humans first. I'm not used to people saying and doing crazy crap like this. So anyways, 
Next, Savachi tests with a female that's not a stranger. The dog still ex exhibited guarding behaviors. Savachi states the dog has never done anything to any of the women at the shelter, indicating that the dog is man aggressive. But he did try to redirect her one time when he tried to take a lunge at a man. Once again, as Sternberg uh, points out, he was going after a man. End of test. End of evaluation. I'm sick of people. And she makes so much sense. Like I said, these things are going to... Hi, Lawrence. See, I was just talking about you. E um, this woman's got common sense, right? She knows that... End of test. A dog's redirecting a woman, lunging at a man. The dog needs to be euthanized. This is ridiculous. There are men in the planet, you guys. Right? On. And this dog's going to try to attack every one of them. Let's get Fluffy a new home. Shut up. Okay? So... I hate to be flip about it, but what we are doing in the shelter world today, right? Right. What we are putting into our communities. He's not a beagle. He's a giant, muscular, athletic dog that's capable of great damage. Okay? During the chair test, the dog displays behaviors which predict aggression to strangers, territorial aggression in the home. And if there's another dog in the home, it predicts dog-to-dog -dog aggression. Okay? He's recently adopted out to a single adult man. In the... Okay. All right. All right. Man pulled him off of Prozac almost completely. He was in the home for three weeks and decided to take him to the dog park. During one occasion at the dog park, the dog attacked an adult female boxer requiring a $300 vet bill. Uh, prior to being told the history of the dog, only being shown a few short clips of the test, Sternberg predicted these behaviors. You should be able to take your dog to the dog park. Why not take him to a park when no one's there? Then a man shows up. What if he had killed the town employee that he had lunged at? The only people who really qualify to take a dog like this is someone who's lived with a dog that had that level of aggression. And anyone who has already lived with a dog with that level of aggression would say no thanks to their next after having the same issues. That's the paradox. I can't help but notice and have to point out these uh, ladies are older. And uh, so they kind of live in that old mind frame like me. Like, what are you talking about? You know? Uh, so let's cover Teddy, the, the Connie Corso. Real quick, because that's the clip I'm going to play for you before I wrap this up. Teddy was found running loose with a female dog. It took multiple animal control officers, multiple police hours to capture the two. He was very aggressive. The dog was so dangerous, he's never been let out of the cage, not even one time. You watch this, you'll see why. Until he was euthanized a year later. Due to the moratorium on euthanasia, he could not be euthanized sooner. No kill animal advocates claim this dog could be rehabilitated with up to three years of training. Jesus Christ. Savachi would not let him out of his kennel because the risk to shelter staff was so high. Teddy fixated on certain people. His behavior was so bad to certain people, it was abusive to the staff members. Teddy has broken many of his teeth, biting the bars of the kennel. The kennel. This dog found a way to get under the guillotine door. Okay, so I'm going to play this. Like I said, I highly suggest you guys watch this. This is very alarming and informative. Because what you have here is a predator beast. He's not even a dog. Your kennels are set up to house dogs. He's no longer a dog. There's no one who could look at that video and think that that is not abject cruelty to animals. This has to stop. Rightly so. Teddy could kill a shelter worker. Can't even get him out of the kennel. He's so aggressive, he's going to kill one of your employees. If he can open the guillotine, somebody is going to go in there to clean, and you're going to find them dead. Just for trying to help these damn things. Finally, she discusses, one behaviorist would look at Teddy and say, yeah, we can train him. Only charlatans would. She said the dog has all the hallmarks that it, of a dog that can kill an adult human. She then refers to the Virginia case involving Blue, a rehome pit bull that killed a woman immediately after his shot collar was removed. This type of charlatan would put a shot collar on him, suppress him the minute the shot collar came off. These dogs don't get rehabilitated. You can suppress them for a certain amount of time using methods that are considered cruel and humane. So, um, they, they do a little bit of information about each woman down there. Like I said, I highly suggest you guys go watch this. Uh, and now I'm going to move the camera down here and I'm hoping you guys can properly hear this and let's, let's uh, do this. I'm going to pump the volume up. Very quiet video. So I'm sorry if it's muffled or you can't hear it. Let me reach up and turn my AC off. All right. Here we go. Without 
without um, event. They would understand that it isn't just about love or the house with no other animal. Yeah. Ugh. No, and it doesn't seem like the people that are doing this want to learn more about behavior. They don't seem right. to try it's, to go to any conferences, take any continuing education. Right. Um, one of the common things they like to say about me personally is that I'm afraid of these dogs, that I'm fearful of dogs, and that is why. Right. And have have I acted fearfully in any of my videos? I mean, no. And Are you scared should, of these things? It doesn't matter. The, the first person that this dog is going to meet on the street out in public is going to be afraid of the dog. So yeah. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You I, mean, I be might be in the wrong dogs. spot. These Hold on. Predators. These dogs are dangerous. I am. Moment here, please. Apologies. And the adopter adopted him and then immediately dropped It's the same shit hound, so I had the two shit hounds mixed up. No this is the right shit hound. Their next dog having the same issues. That's the paradox. So once you realize that, you realize that all we're doing is duping somebody into adopting a dog because they don't truly understand. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, and also, you know, it doesn't feel good. I mean, for me anyway, to give somebody a dog like that, knowing right. the impact that it will have on their yeah their life um I'm and on the boxer's life and everyone at the dog park and you know so oh God. Oh, Sorry, more minutes, i have this other dog um his name is teddy he lived in the animal shelter for Here over a year he's an adult male cane corso he had he was running loose with a female dog and uh, they had to be captured with multiple police officers, multiple police cars, multiple animal control officers. And it was like, it took hours. It was very the last time they had to do that to me, I had to pay like $6,000 in fines. And they talked about euthanizing me. <laughs> very hard to capture and very aggressive. Um, and due to the euthanasia ban, uh, he sat in the shelter for a very long time and he did not get out of his cage one time from the time that he was placed in the oh, cage God. to the time oh that he God. was euthanized and oh, oh God. the argument with the people who wanted him to be uh, adopted out was that he should be worked with and taken out of the cage and that um, you know if we didn't want to take him out of the cage. They could have, they know trainers that would be willing to take him out to work with him because he could be rehabilitated. I'm going to fast forward a little um, bit. Well, now I upset the computer gods. You know, fixates on them like that. You know? Hi, Teddy! So that's him with me. Teddy, Teddy! Aw, you guys nice see ya. Hi, Teddy! This is the human he likes. Hi, Catherine. How are you? Here comes the one he doesn't. Oh, like I said, I highly suggest you guys watch this. This dog literally pulls the guillotine door up over and over again. Not worth it. That's abusive to the staff person. Not even worth it. He's uh, broken many of his teeth fighting the bars. And oh, oh my God. Um, so I'll show you another video of him too. This is just him trying to get under the guillotine, but he actually learned how to get under the guillotine door and almost oh got God. He's trying to get out of the guillotine door right now so he can figure out a way to go get that Catherine lady. Number one, he oh breaks God. through the door. Oh my God. Now he's attacking it. Jesus. Oh. oh, wow. Oh, wow. You people will never convince me that this is intelligent behavior. This is just flat out cruelty. 
we got out of hand long ago breeding dogs and we weren't breeding for temperament. We bred for looks and aggression and stupidity and uh, you can't change my mind. So from the bottom of my dog hating heart, I appreciate all of you. Highly suggest going and checking out this video. It's called Canine Behavior Review with Sue Sternberg and Gia Savacci. It's on dogsbite.org. Um, not, not an old article, real easy to find. Um, once again, everybody's great. Appreciate y'all. I'll get another video knocked out tonight. Um, fuck Fluffy, right? And uh, I'm sorry. Uh, this, this is just absurd to keep these things alive. It's one thing everybody's going to have their damn pets and I got to deal with the barking and everything else. This stuff is just unacceptable. So thank you for the suggestion, Queen Cat. Um, thank you to everyone in your uh, comments and emails. I've been getting some great emails from um, TLSD. She knows who she is. And uh, talking to her today, great conversations. She was actually treated like garbage on all the other dog channels and kind of reached out and was describing some of that. And we had a little conversation about it. A lot of times the groups can get very clicky. Nobody's being mean here. You know, we all know how it is. And uh, so I'm, I'm glad to have her in my emails and uh, she has a lot of great information. And, um, you know, guys, I really appreciate you. And until next time, I'm going to cut this short. This will be one of my longest videos, so it's going to take forever to download or upload or whatever the hell it's called. I'm old, doing my best. All right, I ain't old. I'm just older than some. Peace.